Sergeant Bo Bergdahl is recovering at a military hospital in Germany. We learned today that doctors are so worried about his mental health after five years in Taliban custody that they've told his family not to reach out even just to say welcome back. Of all the questions swirling around this young man, perhaps the most intriguing is why did he leave his base in the first place? Tonight, ABC's Martha Raddatz probes the mystery. Who is Bo Bergdahl? This is the Bo Bergdahl the world knows. Release me, please. I'm begging you. Leading to the camera in proof of life videos released by the Taliban. But this is the Bo Bergdahl Sherry Horton knows doing something he loved. He was a wonderful partner. All the girls enjoyed, you know, dancing with him because he was so strong and steady. Sherry was Bergdahl's ballet teacher and later his roommate back home in Idaho. He's a very interesting guy. He very quiet. Um, he was an observer. You couldn't actually put him in a little cubby hole. He was kind of his own person. His own, he was very much an individual. But tonight, his family and friends can't even speak to him to say welcome back yet. The doctors at Landstuhl Military Hospital in Germany concerned that years of isolation and captivity have resulted in deterioration of the Army sergeant's mental and physical health, and he is yet to be questioned by military authorities. How did Bergdahl disappear? The commander-in-chief says that is beside the point. We still get an American soldier back if he's held in captivity, period, full stop. But that has not stopped the increasing questions about Bergdahl's captivity. Perhaps most importantly, did the young soldier desert? Sherry Horton doesn't know the answer to that, despite her unwavering support. The bow I knew wasn't a quitter, he wasn't a desert. Murder. He wasn't, this isn't what I would have seen him doing, and I don't know for a fact that this is what he did. Nobody does. But those who served right next to him in Afghanistan say he intentionally left his post. It was premeditated, um, it was thought out. Cody Full roomed with Bergdahl before their deployment. He was not uh, forcefully taken off the base. I don't think that somebody that deserted their platoon mates in a time of war should no be able to desert and get away with it. Could he be punished? Access. The there Army today said that it is preparing a comprehensive review of Bergdahl's disappearance and captivity, a review that will include speaking to the former prisoner himself. According to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, when Bergdahl is ready to provide them, we'll learn the facts. Like any American, he is innocent until proven guilty. Adding, our Army's leaders will not look away from misconduct if it occurred. Given the years the in captivity, says, defense Obama officials say punishment is unlikely. But an investigation could answer the question, why would Bergdahl leave the base? In the first hostage video, Bergdahl was asked about soldiers who go AWOL or desert. deserting because they, can't, they don't want to be here because what, they know that this is wrong and they just want to go home to their families. And senior defense officials tell ABC News Bergdahl wrote a note expressing disillusionment with the mission in Afghanistan and thinking he might have a better way to deal with it. That naive idealism does not come as a surprise to those who knew him. I guess in his mind he was dissatisfied with the United States uh, Army over there. There were times when it got to be a little much for him. He would go hike into the woods and just sit and meditate for an hour. And controversy continues to swirl about the deal, swapping Bergdahl in exchange for five high-level Taliban prisoners held at Guantanamo, leaving many wondering, did President Obama make a bad deal? Good afternoon, everybody. Critics of the Bergdahl deal say that President Obama gave up too much in return for Sergeant Bergdahl. These Taliban operatives that we released from Guantanamo were not foot soldiers. We're talking about the deputy intel minister, the deputy defense minister, two governors, a provincial security chief. This was a top cadre of Taliban leaders, and I expect that they'll return to terrorism. The men arrived in Qatar to a hero's welcome, joined by their families. A Qatari official saying the only restriction placed on them, a ban from traveling outside of Qatar for a year.
Nearly a third of the detainees who have left Guantanamo, roughly 200 out of 600, are confirmed or suspected of having returned to terrorism. Today, the president defended the decision. And we have confidence that uh, we will be in a position to go after them if, in fact, uh, they are engaging in activities that threaten our defenses. In addition, Gordon says that with the Bergdahl deal, President Obama may have set a dangerous precedent. So if the Taliban could get five of their top leaders out of Guantanamo just for this guy who was a deserter, imagine what they can do if they got a war hero. As a parent, I can't imagine the hardship that you guys have gone through. But for Bergdahl's parents, standing beside the president in the Rose Garden over the weekend, no effort seemed outside consideration. How far would a father go? His father, Bob, grew a beard and learned Pashto to connect with his son's captors. Assalamu alaikum. Even tweeting to a Taliban spokesman just before his son's release, I am still working to free all Guantanamo prisoners. ABC News has learned that a video of Bergdahl, which emerged earlier this year and seen only by the U.S. government, showed an increasingly frail and disengaged Bergdahl. For Sherry Horton, it has been painful to see the dancers she once knew fade away while being held by the Taliban. He's always been a big, strong guy in the last pictures that were coming out he was not um, and so that's the difference I could see but at the time I actually stopped watching the videos I want to go home but the army will certainly be taking a hard look again at those videos still so many questions remain for Nightline I'm Martha Raddatz in Washington an intriguing and mysterious story and our thanks to Martha for that